Remember, a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Tonight from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark Cards bring you Ann Baxter in The Covered Bridge on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories and presents as your host one of the most distinguished actors of the American theater, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Lionel Barrymore. Tonight's story is woven round one of the old beloved landmarks of the American scene, the Covered Bridge. You can readily see in reading his novel that Herman Peterson must have been deeply moved by those bridges and the legends that surround them, for he's written a strong, poignant story of some events that were a part of the history of one of these covered bridges. And against the background of this bridge, he's placed a woman of unforgettable courage and determination, Zoanne O'Day. And as our charming guest tonight on Hallmark Playhouse, we are happy indeed to present Anne Baxter. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. One of the particular joys of Christmas is sending and receiving Christmas cards. While the pleasure Christmas cards bring can never be measured, isn't it good to know that Hallmark cards are priced the same this year as they were last year, and the year before, and the year before that? And that the quality of Hallmark cards has constantly improved throughout the years. Yes, today, just as for many Christmas seasons, that Hallmark on the back of your card is looked for and welcomed. It tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture, Plymouth Adventure, starring Spencer Tracy, Gene Tierney, Van Johnson, and Leo Genn. And now, here is the first act of The Covered Bridge, starring Ann Baxter. <laughs> of Zoanne O'Day, a strong and beautiful woman who lived in the Shenango Valley in the years following the Civil War. She was up before the sun one fine June morning. She walked along the river, and when the sun rose, she stood quietly looking at the covered bridge. Tomorrow, my son will be married on the covered bridge and a dream that began when I was no older than he is now will have come to completion. A dream that began when I was no older than he is now. I was 20 when I first talked to Michael about the covered bridge. We stood on this very spot looking across the river. Oh, Michael, Michael, how warm, how living are the memories. All memories of you. Here beside the river, I'm a girl again. And you're beside me, and all of life is once more ahead of us. Mrs. O'Day. Mrs. Michael O'Day. Even after a year, I can't believe it. Oh, you're the world, Zoanne, and all the thunder and fire and excitement of the world. And I'm no match for you. No one is more aware of that than I am. Oh, Michael. You're all the happiness in the world. Oh, darling. What, what have you been thinking about? You've been staring across the river for almost an hour. I've been thinking about the future. 
There's 400 acres across the river I'd like to own. Uh, 400 acres. Daniel Stone owns it now. But Daniel Stone has been buying a lot of land lately. I don't think he's going to be able to hold on to it all. It's good farming land. Ah, good farming land. One third of it's underwater. We can build a ditch to the river and drain it. Then we'll have 400 good acres ready for the plow. Oh, it just isn't practical, Zoan. Even if we did all that, it wouldn't be a good investment. Do you realize how long it would take to get plowmen over there? Men would have to go way down to the town bridge to get across. And, oh, it would cost too much to farm it. It wouldn't cost too much if we had a bridge. We could build our own bridge right here and join the land. <laughs> now it's build a bridge, is it? Do you realize what a bridge would cost? That's no pasture creek. That's a river. Even the cheapest kind of bridge. I wasn't cost... thinking of the cheapest kind of bridge, Michael. I was thinking of the most expensive. I was thinking of one that was sturdy and durable, built to stand against the years. A covered bridge. Why all this talk of land and bridges, Oan? Why do you suddenly want all that? We've got to start a kingdom, Michael. A kingdom for your son. For my son? My, my son. Oh, so much. Yes, darling. Yes. In the spring, our first child will be born. I want him to be born to a kingdom. And I want a bridge here, on this spot, to be the entrance to his kingdom. Uh, Mr. Stone, I've come to talk to you about the Riverland. My husband and I would like to buy it. We'll pay a fair price. Land is not for sale. Mr. Stone, you bought up thousands of acres for miles around. You own the mill, you own the town bridge, you own the dam, you own half the buildings in town. That 400 acres can never mean to you what it means to me. It's not for sale. Mr. Stone, I wonder if you haven't been the law in this town a little too long. The prices are too high at your mill. The wood in your bridge is cheap and rotten. And every year it gets washed out when the water spills over your dam, and the whole town is crippled till you get around to fixing things. If you don't like the way things are, I'm afraid that's just too bad, Mrs. O'Day. I don't like them, Mr. Stone. And I think I'm going to do something about them. And the first thing I'm going to do is get that land. If you were the last man alive and I was starving, you wouldn't get that land. But, Mr. Stone, I'm a woman. <laughs> Joanne, Mr. Stone is in the parlor. He wants to talk to you. Good. I thought he'd be here before too long. <laughs> He's mad as a wet hornet. What have you done to him? <laughs> I found out there was a mortgage on Mr. Stone's land across the river. That he hadn't made any payments in two years. He's land poor, Michael. So I bought the mortgage. And I had him notified that if he didn't pay, I'd foreclose. Uh, where did you get the money to buy this mortgage? Your father loaned it to me. You know he hasn't any more love for Stone than the rest of us. Come on, darling. Let's not keep him waiting. Well, a very good evening to you, Mrs. O'Day. And my congratulations. When do you intend to foreclose the mortgage? Oh, I don't intend to foreclose, Mr. Stone. Unless you force me. I've offered you a fair price for that land. My offer still holds. Why should you buy when you can foreclose? Because I consider it the fair thing to do. You'll get no gratitude from me in exchange. You and I are enemies now, and enemies will remain as long as I live. I'll have my revenge for this night. Shall we meet at the bank at ten in the morning to sign the papers? Aye, we'll meet. You're riding high and mighty tonight, aren't you? Well, you'll sing another tune before I'm through with you. Good night, Mrs. O'Day. Stone makes a bad enemy, Zoan. And so do I, Michael. You seem a complete stranger to me tonight, Zoan. You're a woman I've never met before. I feel like a woman I've never known before. It's a wonderful feeling to stand up to injustice, Michael. I've been afraid of many things in my life. I don't think I'll ever be afraid again. Let Daniel Stone do his worst. I'll be ready for him. Oh, Michael, darling... Just think we own the land now. Now we can build the covered bridge. And so, at last the land was ours. And I could plan the bridge. 
I walked here beside the river one morning with Michael and his father on either side of me. The money that would build the bridge was Timothy's. But the dream was mine. Now, where do you see this bridge of yours, Joanne? I see it just about here. Going from this knoll where we're standing across to that one. See? It's almost directly on. Oh, Zoran, that's too long a span. Don't forget the O'Days are building this bridge out of their own pockets. It's not a town project. Well, then let the O'Days build better than the town. And teach everyone a lesson in economy. Where would you build? Well, down below where the distance across is shorter. If you do that, your bridge will be swept away when the river rises just as Daniel Stone does every year. If we're going to do it, let's do it right. Yes. Let's build it right. Let it stand high above the floods, strong against the elements. Build it from the knowledge of today and yesterday and whatever vision we can glimpse of tomorrow. Civilization conquers the wilderness in terms like this. A house, a bridge, a mill, a railroad. <laughs> You'll be owning a railroad next, Zoan. No. Next, I'll own a mill. By the eternal, I believe you will. I watched them build the bridge. Stick by stick, piece by piece, I saw it rise. Until at last it stood as I dreamed it. High above the river, 70 feet long, roofed and sided like a low barn, open at both ends. It was completed one day in June, the day our son was born. So, you did have a son, Mrs. O'Day. Does he look like you, Michael? I want him to look like you. He looks like his mother. And a moment ago, like his mother, I swear, he opened his mouth and roared, Where's my bridge? They finished it today? Yes, they drove the last nail. Did anyone cross it? No, no. I wanted you to be the first. No, no. He must be the first to cross it. Wrap him in blankets. Take him down today. Now, walk across with him in your arms. The day he was born. And mark the day on the bridge, Michael. June the 9th, the year 1868. <laughs> Oh, Zoan, do you think he'll remember? No. We'll remember. There'll be lots of other things for him to remember about the bridge. And so Michael took our son in his arms and crossed the bridge for the first time. And I lay back on my pillows and wept for joy. A few weeks later, I ran through a midnight weeping with panic and rage, seeing flames leap up from my bridge and the night on fire. Get out of the way, Zohan. Don't go too close to the bridge. You've got to save it, Timothy. You've got to save well, it. Well, get out of our way and give us a chance. Please. I'm going to carry buckets of water. I've got to do something. It's something. All right, this end, Father. I'm coming, lad. We can't lose it now. We can't lose it now. Keep those buckets of water moving. Oh, and he's off for a moment now. Keep the water coming. Stone, have you a moment for me? A moment's about all I can spare, Mrs. O'Day. You heard about our fire last night on the bridge. Yes, I heard. You'll be sorry to hear that we managed to save it. Some of the floor timbers will have to be replaced. But we saved it. What do you mean, I'll be sorry? We found the remains of the fire that had been built under the bridge, Mr. Stone. And beside the fire, we found this coal oil can. It has your name on the bottom of it. No, see here, if you're trying to imply... I'm not trying to imply anything, Mr. Stone. But understand this. If you ever so much as set foot on our land again, I'll come after you myself with a shotgun. You don't belong in a country like this. You don't want to give anything to it. You want to take what you can, exploit the land, but not contribute anything to it. And what do you want to do, Mrs. O'Day? I suppose you tricked me out of that land for purely altruistic motives. 
You wanted to give something to the land, didn't you? I intend to give something to the land. I intend to cultivate it, make it yield. You don't intend to do anything different than I intended. Don't try to whitewash yourself. Woman or not, you are playing the same game. You knew the railroads were coming across that land, and that's why you wanted it. No. I didn't know the railroads were going to cross that property. And I still don't know it. But if they come, we'll cultivate the land on either side. The land is the important thing, Mr. Stone. The land and progress. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of The Covered Bridge, starring Ann Baxter. Have you discovered that you often know who sent a certain Christmas card even before you glanced the name inside? Something about the color or design or the gaiety or formality of the greeting you have in hand seems to say, this is from the Johnsons, just like their farm in New England. Or, I'll bet Janet chose this card. She loves everything in shades of blue. It's true that a Christmas card almost always reveals the taste of the person who sends it, and that is as it should be. For nothing you give your friends all during the year expresses your feeling of warmth and love so completely. And one pleasant way to find that perfect card for you or your family is to select from the Hallmark Christmas card albums. You'll find that the collection is widely varied and that Hallmark cards are the ones you'll be proud to have printed with your name. And here's a wonderful plus. That Hallmark on the back of every card you mail gives added meaning to your message because it tells your friends instantly you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to Lionel Barrymore in the second act of The Covered Bridge, starring Ann Baxter. day stood quietly beside the covered bridge. It was the day of her son's wedding, and her heart was full. Everywhere she looked, she saw peace and beauty, but it hadn't always been like that. It hadn't always been peaceful and beautiful at the covered bridge. Yes, the covered bridge was completed the day our son Marsh was born. The seven years that followed were busy happy years. We drained the land across the river, began to farm it, and in time sold part of it to the railroads. With the money we realized, we built a mill. I had little time to think of Daniel Stone, and yet I was always aware of his presence. I knew he was biding his time, waiting for the hour when he could strike again. And at last the hour came. Late one night, I remember, I remember one of our farm hands pounding frantically at the front door. Zeb, what is it? Daniel Stone. He's coming this way with a gang, maybe 40, 50 men. I heard about it in the village and cut across country as fast as I could come. Stone's been buying them drinks for hours. They say they're going to burn the bridge and the mill and the house. They're going to destroy the crops. They're all going right, to Zeb, all right, all right. How soon do you think they'll be here? 15, 20 minutes. Come on, we'll wake the hands. Go ahead. I want you to stay here in this house. This is work for the men. Oh, no, Michael. This is our land. It's my work as much as yours. I'll fight beside you. You'll stay in this house where you belong. Michael, we're wasting time. Now, don't argue with me, Zoanne. You'll only be in the way out there. Bolt all the doors. Take the shotgun down from the wall and stay in this house. Take care of Marsh. I'll do my best out there to take care of you both. <laughs> sat by the window in Marsha's bedroom, cold and shaking. Afraid for Michael, afraid for Marsh, afraid for all we'd planned and built and dreamed. I sat by that window, helpless, unable even to cry out as I saw the mob of men turn in by the gates, saw their lanterns flung at field and building, heard their rough shouting voices. Now and then I, I saw flames leap up and then flicker out, and in their light I saw the figures of men struggling. Now and then I... I fancied I could distinguish voices. Michael's voice. The voice of my father-in-law. 
the voice of Daniel Stone. The night was endless, and I longed and yet feared for the dawn. Last dawn came, and big Tim O'Day walked into the house, carrying Michael in his arms. As he put Michael on the bed, he told me Daniel Stone was dead. But Stone was no longer important. No one was important but my husband, lying still and white on that bed. So, Anne. Uh, so, Anne. Yes, darling. Your face is wet. Have you been crying? No, just a little. It's dawn. Night is over. You and Marsh will never have to worry about Daniel Stone again. Oh, Michael. Michael. So, Anne. Teach our son the ways of the land. He'll, he'll make a good farmer. He comes of generations of men who've loved the land. Michael. Uh, so, Anne, take my hands. Michael, don't leave me. The years we've had have been wonderful years. Now, don't spoil them with tears. Don't cloud them with sorrow. <laughs> Be glad of what we've had as, as I am glad and grateful. Father. Oh, Marsha, I thought you were asleep. Come, come here, son. Is something wrong, Father? Marsh, I may have to leave you for a while. And I am leaving in your care the things I have loved most, your mother and the land. You take care of them both, my son. Love them both as I have loved them. Yes, Father. Take him from the room, Zoe. Michael. Take him from the room. Come, Marsh. You must go back to bed. Yes, Mother. Good night, Father. Good night, son. Sleep well, Father. Yes. Sleep well, my darling. Michael was gone. But as Marsh grew, he lived again in his son. Sometimes watching Marsh follow his plow, I could almost believe it was Michael. And always when he spoke of the land, it was Michael's voice I heard. He had the same feeling for earth and crops that his father had. Michael would have been proud of his son. Mother? Mother, it's time you were getting dressed for the wedding. Yes, Marsh. You've been standing here for hours. I watched you from the window as I dressed. What have you been thinking about? Oh, I've been thinking about the past and the present. I was about to think of the future when you interrupted me. And how does the future look to you, Mother? The way the future should look. Good. Full of hope. A good crop in the barns, a good planting in the fields. How did it look to you on your wedding day? Well, across the river were swamps and wild, uncultivated land. And here on this side was a house and a few well-tilled acres. But when we looked about us, we saw what you see now. We saw a covered bridge... And we saw well-tilled land across the river. We saw the mill. What do you see, Marsha? Well, I see more land across the river. If we could buy the property adjoining ours and clear it... Good. That's progress. That's the way the country must grow, Marsh. On the dreams of the young people. We gave to the land. And you'll give to it. And your son's after you. It's all part of a pattern, Marsh. A good pattern, a strong pattern. Youth and earth, earth and youth. The strongest, the best, the most creative pattern in the world. There's the symbol of your father's dream and my dream. The covered bridge. And now it's yours. A bridge from the past to the present, to the future. It means both life and death to me. May it mean only life to you and promise and happiness.
Lester and Lionel Barrymore will return in a moment. This Christmas, how would you like to delight your friends with an original painting of New England by Grandma Moses? Or a vigorous landscape by Winston Churchill? Or one of Norman Rockwell's lovable pictures painted with his delightful, heartwarming touch? It's such an easy thing to do. If you choose the Christmas card, you want him printed with your name from the Hallmark Gallery Artist Series. You'll find that all the beauty and magic of the Yuletide season has been captured by the artists who create Hallmark cards. There are traditional themes, too. Holly, candles, poinsettia, cards aglow with fireside scenes or elegantly lettered in formal gold or green or red. And you need only make your selections now at the fine stores where Hallmark cards are sold in order to have them in plenty of time for leisurely addressing. So why not plan to treat your friends to the cards they'll love to display? You can count on it. Once they see the Hallmark on the back of the card that bears your name, they'll know you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is Lionel Barrymore. And it was good to have you with us on the Hallmark Playhouse tonight. Thanks for a wonderful performance. I'm so glad you invited me, Mr. Barrymore. Especially tonight, as I wanted to tell you personally how stirred I was last Sunday night when you read My Country, Tis of Thee, and then urged us all to get out and vote as Americans. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you. You know, I believe this election was good for all of us. Never before have so many of us shown such an interest in an election, and never before have so many of us voted. But the most important thing, it seems to me, is what it can portend for the future. Well, what's that, Mr. Barrymore? That we've learned that a democracy is a working partnership. And we, the private citizens, must also be active and vigilant. If we've learned that, as I believe many of us have, then it looks like America is headed for the greatest period in its history. For then we'll not be just Election Day Americans, but everyday Americans, expressing ourselves forcibly for all that's good for America and expressing ourselves forcibly against all that's bad for America. Yeah, and we'll all be active citizens all year round. And that's the best thing that could happen to our country. I think all of us feel just as you do, Mr. Barrymore. But very few can express it so eloquently. Thank you. And now, uh, won't you tell us about your plans for next week's Hallmark Playhouse? Well, uh, next week on Hallmark Playhouse, we'll present the story of a small-town lawyer who is family and the place in the community when we dramatize Bellamy Partridge's novel, Thunder Shower. And to play the leading role, we've invited Edward Arnold to join us. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Sunday. Our producer-director is William Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was adapted by Gene Holloway. Well, uh, until Sunday then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you carry enough to send the very best. Ann Baxter will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production, I Confess. The role of Michael was played by Lamont Johnson. Others in our cast included Ted DeCorsia as Stone, Polly Bear as Timothy, Eddie Firestone as Marsh, and Sammy Ogg as The Boy. Every Sunday, Hallmark Cards present two great programs for the whole family's enjoyment. On radio, the Hallmark Playhouse with host Lionel Barrymore. And on television, outstanding dramatic entertainment on the Hallmark Television Theater. Consult your paper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying good night to you all until next week at the same time when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Edward Arnold in Bellamy Partridge's Thunder Shower. And the week after that, Jane G. Austen's Standish of Standish, starring John Hodiak. And the week after that, Bruce Lancaster's The Secret Road on the Hallmark Playhouse. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.